people of God, welcome to worship this day on this Ash Wednesday, a day when we gather to remember who we are and who God has created and called us to be. Uh, we continue uh, to gather and worship online during this COVID-19 uh, reality um, in order to keep people safe and uh, we'll do the same today. We will, however, have um, at the distribution of ashes taking place throughout the day. Uh, so you are welcome to come over to Christ the King Lutheran Church at 3 Lutheran Drive here in Nashua and uh, receive those ashes in your car, drive through ashes. Um, I will be um, just inside the sanctuary entrance doors. And when I see you drive up, I'll come on out. You will see me, I will be gloved. I will um, have a mask on my face as well as a shield. I will come and offer ashes to whoever in your vehicle um, desires them. And I'll also give you a little prayer card to take with you. Uh, so you're invited to come through. The times that we have set are 9.30 to 11 a.m. And then again from 12.30 to 1.30. And then finally from 5.30 to 7.00. And particularly um, in the morning times, we ask you to pay very close attention to those start and stop times because uh, preschool drop off and pick up is on either side of those. So uh, pay attention to that <clears throat> and we hope to see you here. We invite you to press pause and download the bulletin that you can find on our Facebook page or our website uh, so that you can follow along in uh, this brief reflective service with us. Thank you for joining us. Dear people of God, from the early days of our faith, Christians have observed the remembrance of Christ's passion and resurrection with great reverence. It became the custom to prepare for that observance uh, by a season of prayer and fasting and the reconciliation of those who had been separated from the community of faith. By keeping the season of Lent, we take heart God's call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel. We further seek to practice in our daily lives the work of reconciliation with God and with each other. I invite you, therefore, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. This service today marks the beginning of that journey of allowing the Holy Spirit to better align our souls with God. To make a right beginning to this season, it is appropriate to receive the mark of ashes in the shape of a cross as a reminder of our mortal nature, of God's grace shown to us in our baptism, and of God's invitation to receive Christ's redeeming work. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through, our, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Here's hymn 325, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me.
reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Here ends the reading. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our savior, and the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. Amen. It is different. It's all different. Many of us of late, I have noticed, have been reflecting on the list of the things that are different when we remember the last time I did something, the last time I ate out at a restaurant, the last time I went to school, the last time we had a party at our house. As we begin to close in on the one-year calendar mark of COVID-19, when we look back, when we look back with a deep sense of longing, a deep sense of loss, and a deep sense of shock, shock that things that changed in early to mid-March would still be unfolding. And yet here we are today. And today is a sacred and solemn day in our life together as God's people. Today is Ash Wednesday, the official start to the season of Lent as we follow Jesus from the mountaintop of last Sunday down into Jerusalem, onto the cross, into the tomb, and out of the tomb three days later. The start of this journeying season begins with an honest reflection of who we are. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. In fact, we began in dust. Genesis 2, we read this, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. And dust isn't something that we can pretty up. Dust is dirty. Dust is the remnants of life, hair, skin cells, dirt, grime, and things we can't even see. This is what we come from. This is what we are made from. In the psalm reading today, we hear this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness 
and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. You see, the psalmist knows our beginnings in the dust, the dirt, the grime of life, and we do too. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. We, as God's people, are called to repent of our brokenness, to turn from our sinful ways and turn back to God to own up to our failings, to our dust-laden lives, and to seek to live in the washed reality we are claimed in. And today, this Ash Wednesday, even as different as this day is from all the others we've experienced, is our day to do just that again. To remember who we are to see again and confess our brokenness and to turn back to God, the one who indeed creates in us a clean heart, a right spirit, a restored and reborn child of God. So we begin this day today with confession. Then, if we choose, we receive the mark of the cross on our forehead in ash, in dust, in the burnt remnants of our shouts and cheers of, Blessed is the King, Hosanna, Hosanna. This marking first, reminding us that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But second, reminding us of the promise that we are held in at baptism. The promise says, Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. On Monday, my family and I celebrated Kai's sixth baptismal birthday. Part of this day was remembering the water, remembering the light, and remembering that mark on his forehead. Throughout the day, we would pause and mark Kai's head and remind him that he is a child of God. We've done this each year since his baptism. So while he was in his bath on Monday, I noted that Martin Luther advocated for the remembering of this mark in the shower or in the bath, at the start and at the close of each and every day before we said our prayers. Kai then proceeded to ask the six-year-old questions. So like every time I take a bath, or what if I take a shower? Or can I do it when I'm washing my hands? Can I help other people do it too? Which of course I heard is he wanted to splash water on people. You see, he was hearing that we are called to stop, to pause in our day-to-day lives and remember. Remember that we are claimed by the one who washes us clean. Friends, on this day, when we remember that we are dust and to dust we shall return, may we see fully who we are and turn back to the one who made us from that dust, who washes us clean in the waters of baptism and who took on death so that we and all people can fully live into who we have been called to be. People created out of the dust, returning to the dust, and held and loved by the one who brought us into being, and who washes us clean in a love that brings forth life from the dust, from the ashes, from our broken lives remembering that we are dust, and to dust we shall return as children of God. A blessed Ash Wednesday to you all. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Is it nothing to you all who pass by? 
Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted upon the day of the Lord's fierce anger. My transgressions are like a yoke about my neck, fastened by the hand of the Lord. They weigh so heavily upon me that my strength is gone. When we lift our hands in prayer to God in heaven, we should offer God our hearts and say, we have sinned, we have rebelled against you. You are kind, God. Please have pity on me. You are always merciful. Please wipe away my sins. Wash me clean from all my sin and guilt. I know about my sins and I cannot forget my terrible guilt. You are really the one I have sinned against. I have disobeyed you and have done great wrong. So it is right and fair for you to correct and punish me. I have sinned and done wrong since the day I was born. But you want complete honesty. So teach me true wisdom. Wash me with hyssop until I am clean and whiter than snow. Let me be happy and joyful. You crushed my bones. Now let them celebrate. Turn your eyes from my sin and cover my guilt. Create pure thoughts in me and make me faithful again. Don't chase me away from you or take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Let it be so. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Relying on the promise of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit and support caregivers who attend to all in need through love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying toward baptism, and call us to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Here, other intercessions and prayers may be offered. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Especially this day, we remember Pastor Tim Roser. 
inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Here's him 328, Restore in us, O God. The good news. Thanks be to God. Here's him 732. Create in me a clean heart. <laughs> 